Working with distributed queries is all about security because basically we have server A that wants to connect to server B. So server A has to know how to talk to server B in such a way that server B will listen and give server A permission to see the data. Now there's two basic ways you can do this. The first is to set up a linked server, which we'll step through in a couple of seconds here, so that server A knows how to talk to server B. And the second way, which is not as recommended, is to put all that authentication and security information directly in your query. And I'll show you those as well, just so you have that information. But to be honest, I think it's much better to set up the linked servers. So in this environment, I have two servers I'm working with. The first one is the local server, and that's the default instance of SQL Server. The second one is an instance called Second. So here it is, and its name is then HP Present slash Second. So we have two SQL servers in this environment, and the local server will be connecting to the second server for these distributed queries. So to establish these linked servers, the SP add linked server stored procedure will create the server, or we can do it through the GUI. I'll show you in code first, then we'll show you how to do it in Management Studio using Object Explorer. So we just basically give it a server name and a server product, and it will work. Right now I'm connected to the second instance, as you can see in the tab and the status bar. So let me change my connection back to local, and then execute this. And of course, your environment's going to be different than mine as far as server names and usernames and everything. So if you want to follow along on your system, you'll have to change the code wherever I reference a specific name. And it creates that linked server. We can see that it created the linked server looking in server objects linked servers. Refresh, and there it is. Here's another example so you can see some different syntax creating a link server and actually giving it a name of Nyack and refresh then there's Nyack if you want to see how the properties looked once we created those you can barely see there the name and under security we're going to add some logins here in a second and security options to view the linked servers in code you can look at the sys management catalog for servers to drop a linked server, you either come over here and just right click and choose delete or execute SP drop server. I'll just run that stored procedure. Just creating the linked server doesn't tell us how we're going to log into the other server, so that's what we have to do next. So this stored procedure is setting up a login. When we intend to log in to the second instance, Instead of just passing over our own credentials, and we set this by saying use self as false, if we're logged into the local server as HP present slash total as the user, over on the remote user, that'll get passed over as SA and this remote password. And for all you hackers out there, this is not really the password. So that's set up the security check out properties, look at security, and you can see that it did set up an impersonation. Using distributed queries we can link to all sorts of different data sources. And I'll show you examples of linking to Excel and Access. We already created some linked servers to Excel and Access when we converted the data over for CHA2 database. So this code drops those linked servers we created earlier and then reestablishes the link to Excel just so you can see what the code looks like. Notice the provider is the JET OLEDB 4.0 and we have to give the hard code location of the Excel spreadsheet. And then here's the link to access, dropping it and recreating it. And if we refresh we now have our three links set up. So now this instance of SQL Server knows how to connect to the CHA1 customer's access database, the CHA1 schedule Excel spreadsheet, and the second instance of SQL Server on the same machine.